flooding is being experienced in most parts of the country. In Santa Elena, the temporary bridge is completely submerged. The human impact has been greatest in Greater Belmopan, specifically the areas of Maya Mopan, San Martin, and Salvapan. In Roaring Creek, the water is still a few feet below the deck, while Camalote, Tea Kettle, Bullet Tree, and Santa Familia are all under alert for flooding. The government knows that the Belizean people and economy are susceptible to weather-related hazards. Most of the damages since 2008 have come from floods in the aftermath of heavy rains and hurricanes through the country and has also been impacted by a lot of drought. Climate change is here. So whatever we plan and think, wherever we are, climate change must be part of those planning and those thinking. We need to initiate actions on the ground to build our capacity to build our ability to be resilient, to build our capacity to, to adapt and you know, mitigate some of the impacts on the ground. We conducted vulnerability studies in some economic sectors of Belize. And these vulnerabilities show that, especially for some sectors, example, the agriculture sector with a one to two degree rise in temperature, there will be a reduction of 12 to 20 percent in yields. And these vulnerabilities were taken for corn, beans, and rice. Belize City is within two rivers, and if we don't plan well, if we don't uh, do the correct strategies, then we will have severe problems. We will be cut off from our airports, we will be cut off from our cruise ports, from our um, commercial ports. And so it is absolutely critical that, first of all, we look at, at Belize City as, as being an important uh, and very vulnerable area for the country. I applaud the government for taking this very important step because we need to put in place a national policy and strategy, a, a, an action plan to, uh, to deal with the, the realities of climate change. We all know uh, like that climate change is not something that is out there. It's not something for the first world countries or you know, countries in Asia or Europe or whatever. So the fact that the government is looking at doing this and, and looking at do it, doing it across, you know, at this cross-sectoral approach, getting in information from the various entities, you know, from the various government entities, from the NGOs, from the communities, this nice integrated dialogue. I, I think I really applaud them for, you know, for taking this, you know, very important step. To see the interest of the international community in wanting to support uh, the government of Belize and the, the, the projects in, in particular, to me, that is an initiative that I think is a very good one one that I want to be a part of. And at the end of the day, I, I do think that uh, when it comes down to climate resiliency, it is not just a tourism thing, it's not just an agriculture thing, it's not just a health thing, not just a, a engineering thing. In fact, it is a cross section of all those sectors and, and really this, this methodology that we have been using so far is, I think has been very effective. <music>